Welcome back. Yesterday we were talking about flower parts, and today I would like to talk to you about pollen. And pollen is going to come from the tip of that stamen, that long strand-like thing, often many strand-like things, that are coming out of the center of the flower. Now, some pollen just wants to drift back to itself or to other similar species. And these are self-pollinators. These pollinators kind of take care of themselves or take care of their buddies that are nearby. And that's the type that goes into the air. Um, this type is often not that sticky because its job is to float through the air, either to itself or to its friends. Now, the majority of plants do require pollinators, which are um, beings that live in a symbiotic relationship, meaning a bee, for instance, gets nectar to make food for baby bees and for themselves to eat by drinking the nectar from the flower. But what it does for the flower, in turn, by taking this wonderful thing from the flower, is that it takes the pollen from that tip of the stamen, uh, and this is usually the sticky type of pollen, and these are also usually the attractor type of flowers that have the brightest colors, these beautiful flowers that are attracting bees, trying to get them in there. And then the bees will get in there and um, get this pollen caught in their little tiny cute fur that's on their bee bodies. And then when they go from flower to flower to flower, they will take it to the next flower and help to pollinate that thing by getting that pollen to the style and um, the, the, not the fashion style, but the type of style that has the ovaries at the bottom. And the ovaries has those seeds that are no good. These seeds are useless for the most part if these little tiny seeds were to fall into the ground until they get that pollen. So that pollen is going to help turn those seeds into the thing that they're going to become, be it a seed pod or a fruit or something really awesome. Um, nature has all kinds of magic around it. Ultimately, you end up with this really sunny, sun-kissed, golden pollen meeting with this earth force springing out from the middle of the plant, um, the ovary um, down at the bottom of the style. And so you have this sun and earth force that meet each other, sometimes with the help of the air blowing that pollen around, sometimes with the help of uh, often airborne pollinators, these hummingbirds and butterflies and bees and things that are going to get into that flower to get the nectar and then also carry that pollen from one type to another. And you'll often see with certain things like bees, they make a plan. They have this little dance that they do to communicate with their hive and they all go try to collect one type of flower and then they move on to the next type. So that really helps the bees because they can stay organized and figure out what has the most nectar to, to drink. And that also really helps the flowers because you know they're not collecting all this wonderful pollen and then taking it to the wrong species of flower where it's really not gonna help anything at all. Uh, they really need pollination from flowers of their same species so that they can create um, their fruit. Underneath this passion fruit flower, you see the sepals, and then you see the petals. And then right in the center, you see this um, pistil with the ovary right there in the center. And then surrounding, you see these five stamen. One, two, three, four. Five. And when bees get on these flowers, they're going to rub up against here and they're going to get the pollen and take it on to the next passion fruit flower and create a passion fruit, which will be filled with seeds. And these nasturtium flowers, you can look at it from the back. We're going to see the sepals here, these little leaves that used to close up the flower. Now the flower opens up in full and we see, wow, what are these golden things right here? This is where you're going to find the pollen 
I'm just gonna pull this out because we have thousands of these. Oh my goodness, look. Pollen everywhere. Smushed. All right. And I'll pull one of these guys off so we can take a better look at it. And maybe I'll take these petals off so we can see what does the inside of this flower look like. And you can see very clearly now. Ah, now you can see very clearly where these uh, stamen are, where the pollen is on the top. When the bee gets in there to grab a little bit of nectar, it's going to have to rub this sticky pollen all over itself and then take it on to the next one. In these dahlia flowers, you have so many petals on the outside, these gorgeous petals. And then on the inside, you have the stamen and this pollen. Now, for some plants, they don't really rely on bees to make pollen. Oh, here we have a culprit. Here we have a bee getting in there from flower to flower. A couple of bees. Here we have a few bees going from flower to flower, taking whatever tiny pollen is in these little stamen and taking them to the next flower. Now, not all flowers rely on the bees. Some of them just release the pollen into the wind, hoping that that pollen will hit the thing that it needs to hit. Um, but sometimes it doesn't hit its target. Sometimes it just gets trapped in your nose. And that's where a lot of allergies take place when people have allergies. Sometimes it's that pollen that's just shedding into the wind where plants that aren't looking for pollinators, they're just looking to have this airborne pollen. And then the pollen goes into your nose. There are some bees busy at work. Now we will learn more about bees later because they're pretty fascinating. Um, but interestingly enough, they don't just collect the nectar. When they go back to their hive, they have collector bees that will take the pollen off of their bodies and turn this pollen into food. And they actually call this bee bread. And they'll stuff their honeycombs, uh, the ones that they also use for honey, those same honeycombs they can stuff with pollen. They'll mix it up with a little bit of uh, fat and even a little bit of already made honey that's in the hive. And then they will stuff this pollen into their combs. And <clears throat> this is also used as food for humans. And some people think that it can help you with your allergies because humans can eat this pollen that's been all densely compacted and collected by the bees. So that's it for pollen, and I will see you all on Monday.